Hello guys, this is Ravenclaw What If. Welcome back to another What If story. Now, I was going to hold this up until much later in the year. This, this, well, it's New Year's and also Happy New Year's everyone. But it's around 1241 so where I'm right now while, while I'm recording this. I was going to wait until much later to record this, but I got a really, I got a, a, a um, story idea in my head today. So I just couldn't just, I need to put it out there before I, before I forget it. So that's, that, that said, and, um, I'm changing the name of the cork. Well, it's not going to be cork at all. I want to do something different. So he's going to have a lot of abilities. Like ever. he's going to be a dragon kin. I have an idea. All of, he's going to have the abilities, his race. I'll go into story about I'll I'll explain his race and what and what they could do, but they're a type of dragonkin that that lives in volcanic areas. Give me a second, guys. These dragonkin, specifically Izuku's kind. There are several types of dragonkin all around the world, in a different dimension. Far from um, the UA universe, but I'll get it all touched up once we get our story going. But there's several different dragon kin. He is his his race is the um, lava dragon kin. I guess you would call it. I don't know what to call him, but um, magma, magma, <laughs> magma kin. I guess would be called it. But they're able to survive magma. They basically play into stuff. So it, it it doesn't affect them at all. Their hair, their skin, their hands, stuff like that. They have ability to um to manipulate magma, you know, lava, and he's a and he's able to create it uh, as well, as well as fire, because you know. Magma is, you know, a more concentrated form of heat. So, I'm not going to get into the science of, of, uh, of everything, but yeah. He's a lot more durable, way stronger than humans. Even with the humans with a cork, he's far more powerful than, than, than they are. Only one would probably give, um... One of Ezekiel's kind trouble would be All Might, and and that's more of a that's more of a senior member of his kind. No, there's no way in uh, there's no way in hell Ezekiel straight off the bat is gonna be stronger than All Might. That's just that's just not gonna happen. It's a good, it's a um, slow process. The older he gets, the stronger he gets. The more abilities he's able to to use. So there's that. Now the name of this what if is what if Deku is a dragonkin. That's what I'm gonna name it. So and he does have wings if you choose to um pop them out. But but you know, we'll 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 go into the, all that fun stuff later. As we start our story officially now, as on a battlefield, a human army is in formation as several kinds of dragonkin and dragons are on the opposite side of the battlefield as they commence their battle, as the humans has, has started their crusade of annihilating all abominations into the world, all abominations from the world, that anything is not human must be eradicated from existence. As the war has progressed for for a long time, for the war has been going on for almost a generation. As Izuku's tribe, other dragonkin came to their village inside a volcano, 
tried to um, get their assistance in his uh, in his in his upcoming battle, but the elders of Ezekiel's kind declined. They are no longer warriors. They saw what they saw the conquering path they were on was going to eradicate their own species out of spite and fear from the humans and the elves. So when the uh, so when the um, elder of this village was younger, he took out the the um the former the former chief because he saw the way that the tribe's going and it was going to go down towards eradication. So he killed him and they slowly but surely directed their new path in their village. They are more peacemakers. They stick to themselves. They become more passive. They, oh, I'm sorry guys. They're more passive now. Doesn't mean they're pushovers, but their species is on a decline. Not many males have been born. So the male population is very limited. So they don't have enough forces to to even um to even join the battle even if they wanted to. As we cut to the battlefield, as several dragon kid and dragon and humans they're slaughtering each other, but the humans have numbers. And with the help of elves and dwarfs, they're slowly losing ground as over the several years they single handedly eradicated village by village of the dragon kin. And the dragons are pretty much extinct by the time by the time the rest of the dragon kin villages were wiped out. As it came down to there's only one dragon kin village in the volcano that the humans and elves can't get to because of the extreme amount of heat. Now I couldn't find a village picture for you know in, in a volcano. Let's say there's you know <clears throat> there's houses, you know, village houses inside a inside a volcano. As you have all the villagers panicking because the volcano is no longer generating heat, it's the volcano, it's, 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 it's becoming dead. Without the volcano being active, their protection is no longer there. They're vulnerable for the first time in centuries to attack to humans and elves and, and any other species that want to take advantage of their weakened state. Now, now this time where Izuku's village is in the middle of their hatching period where they hatch all their um, hatchlings or give birth to all their hatchlings as they all are forms of eggs. In order to um, in order for the eggs to hatch both parents has to during the right process the waiting period once the egg finally matures to a certain point they have to uh, both parents have to touch the egg in order to you know progress the DNA sort 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 of say now that egg won't be fertile until they pass on DNA to the egg either through touch or blood The village is doing, doing what they do every year, every, let's say the hatching period happens every about 50 years. As during this one hatching, as this one hatching period for all the, all their, all their kind to gather up and to give birth to all their young, as suddenly 
bunch of ice blast starts coming down from the air. As all the people in the village see soldiers riding wyverns as their mass as their keep blasting to the um, blasting the village as several wyverns land as the wyverns begin to rip begin to attack all the all the dragon kin including with the with a lot of mages as they begin slaughtering the village as all the soldiers are gathering all the eggs and breaking them as Ezekiel's parents were massacred per a uh, per uh, protecting Ezekiel while he was an egg as the soldier as the as the human picks it up place it on a rock as he's holding a um one of those bigger hammer type of deals as it's enchanted with the magic as he's as soon as he's about to as soon as he's about to swing downwards a blast of fire comes down killing several wyverns and their riders now if i remember right Wyverns are a lesser kind of a dragon, I think. I'm not totally sure on that. I'm not positive, but I think what that I think what that I think what that they are. They're just a lower lower class of dragon. The humans have um enslaved them and used them into in into their military force. That's how they've been eradicating several of the dragon kin. With magic and um in, in, enchanted weapons and stuff like that. And with, you know, Dragon Slayers. That's been a major um, problem for all Dragon Kin. As the dragons have pretty much been wiped out. There's only, there's only one left. The last dragon. As you see white fire coming down as the dragon lands. As it grabs, as it bites down on a wyvern. Breaks the neck as it tosses it in in into the side of the volcano, grabbing the egg and flying off. As several wyverns give chase, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> as the dragon's being pursued by several dragon slayers, as the dragon got pierced pretty good, barely missing her, missing his heart, as it coughs up blood. As it turns around on his back, as if lights of fires of extremely high beam of energy coming from his mouth. As it eradicates majority of them, as it flies off higher, higher, as it found a safe a safe area to land to to rest as the dragon coughing up blood as it's it's the dragon is during his last last few minutes of life not because of the attack he was injured because it's it's going it's um his his life is coming to an end naturally he's been alive for far too long As he found a cave. As he's resting for about a day. As the dragon wakes up. As he hears footsteps. Several clinking noises. As a whole unit of dragon slayer and knights come rolling in. Release the egg dragon. That abomination must die. I won't allow you to. To eradicate this dragon kin this hatchling I will protect it with my life the fact that the mass the mass genocide you humans constantly wage I should have known better I just, 
I should have eradicated your species a long time ago. Very well, dragon. If you want to die that badly, so be it. After we kill you, we'll destroy that abomination and rid the word rid the world of these dragon kin. Disgusting, despicable creatures. So be it, human. As he blasts, as the fight progresses in the cave, as several hours has passed, as the dragon falls down, as the dragon starts coughing up blood, as he forces himself to get up, I don't have, I can't allow them to kill you, young one. I'm sorry. I wish I was there to to guide you during the right path, but you're not safe in this realm. I'll use the last of my my magical power. Use the last of my strength to send you somewhere far away. As a bright light engulfs the cave, as he throws the as he. As he throws the, you know, he kind of tosses the egg. Um, Dragonkin eggs are very durable, so. O only way to kill one or break an egg is using a magical weapon. Magical weapon made out of um, dragon remains. Dragon horns or teeth. Something around down there. Dragon slayer weapons. That's been magically en en enchanted. So as several soldiers come up, as they're like, as the portal disappears, as they're like, where did you send the egg? Where did you send that abomination? As the dragon laughs. <laughs> Far out of your reach, reach, human. He'll be safe where he's going. Kill the beast. He's weakened. I might be weakened foolish one but I have enough strength to eradicate you as he whaps his tail grabs the, one of the dragon slayers slams him on the ground bites one head off as he throws him against the wall as he slaughters everyone as he's like live well hatchling it's a shame I would love to see what type of person you would end up being. As his life has came to an end, his time has come. I guess I'm going to reunite with the rest of my kin. Good luck, young one. As the dragon begins to evaporate in bright light, little by little, as the dragon disappears co completely. As all magic in that realm cease to exist. As, as the humans are freaking out, so is the elves. No, no, sorry. The elves the the elves warn the humans to um to not kill dragons because without dragons there is no magic. Without dragon kin, without dragon or dragon kin, they're magical creatures. Now, Ezekiel won't have magic because, you know, he'll be too overpowered all, already, so. And as the planet starts shaking, without magic stabilizing the planet, the planet slowly dies as all life begins to fade as the planet blows up killing everyone on it that's all the races are all no longer no longer there as we cut to Inka as Inka and Asashi were trying to have children but she's unable to She's unable to create children herself as 
she began slowly, you know, hating herself. She's in a tough spot as as both Asashi and Inka agreed to have a divorce because they were only married during a quirk marriage and he wanted a um he wanted a um a child but Inka's unable to give him that. So they um they had a mutual divorce. But over the years, she slowly stopped taking care of herself. Misky tried to do her best, but she does she doesn't see the point in living anymore. As one day she was rescued by the dragon hero. Yeah, she's gonna be a big part in this story, so. She was rescued by a she was taken by a villain as I forget her name. I believe her name is Rayoko. I'm not totally sure on that, but I think that's her name is. Rayoko. Rayoko. Okay, I just want to make sure I got that name down. This is Rayoko, the dragon hero. Save Inko Midoriya. Well, just Inko now, but um yeah, let's let's continue. As after she saved her, she knows how bad of a bad of uh, 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 sorry condition. So she, you know, escorted her home. Misky was worried, and they they put her to bed. As Misky and um, Ryoko talk, and she found out about Inko's story. As she can't have children a, a, as well. So she would constantly come back every so often to to check up on um, Inko. As they slowly begin a friendship that blossom into something more. Yeah, Inko's, you know, gonna, you know, play for the, the same team just on, on, on this one. This is just for me because her is, um, Ryoko's a dragon hero. So that would make sense for the story. So... There's that. As over the years, they started dating and, and they eventually got married. As Inka, you know, is finally happy. But deep down, she still wants a kid as they've been going to different orphanages just to adopt. But they haven't found the right child that... They just haven't found the right one. They're always too old. Or they're not up for adoption. Because some of the adoption, some of the orphanages are pretty, you know, shady. As Rayoko is a hero. So, she has several orphanages she's visit. She has, she had to investigate the people that take care of the kids as they're not very nice people. As we cut to, a little time has passed. As they're driving... On the road outside of the city. As they were, you know, doing, you know, um, outdoor stuff. Just bonding more. As they're driving, as a truck almost ran them off the road. As Inko turns, as she, the car flies off the road. Heading into the forest. As suddenly the car stops hitting a tree. As Inka lost consciousness. As she got knocked out. Ry Ry uh, Ryoko woke up. As she's shaking. Inko, Inko, get up. What's going on, Ryoko? Are you alright? I'm fine. My neck hurts. Try not to move it. As Ryoko checks her, she, she's in, she's just in shock. Come on, let's, let's go. We need to get back to the road. Once I, once we get it back to the road, I'll be able to contact someone. Because right now, we, I have no cell single in the deep forest, like where we're at right now. As they're walking through the forest, as the... The clear night, 
becomes cloudy. Dark clouds start forming as it starts lightning and thunder starts happening. As Reiko takes the jacket off and puts it over Inka to cover herself from, you know, the cold. As Inka's like, well, what about you, dear? I'm f I'll, I'll, I'll be fine. Water won't hurt me. I can't have you having, can't have you getting sick on me. Yes, dear. As they're walking as Rayo, Rayo, sorry, Rayoko, her senses come in as she grabs Inko as a lightning ball hits on the ground. As they're running, as the lightning start hitting the ground. As Inko's like, what the hell is going on with, with the weather? I don't know. As they come to an open field, as there's a bright light, as Inko and uh, Ryoko notice it, as a portal, a portal opens and closes, as as they both see a uh, egg floating in the air, as it gently touches down, as. As soon as it touched down, there's a gust of wind. Not uh, not enough to blow a human up, but it, but it's enough to blow hair around. As Ryoko, what's that? An egg? Inko, don't go near it. It, it might be dangerous. Stop being worried, dear. It's just an egg. Maybe we found a new species. We definitely need to get to some... Um, we need to get in contact with the proper authorities, the the proper people to um to document this. Dear, um word that a random egg just appeared out of nowhere through a freaking portal apparently. What it look like? You mean it's you and I highly doubt the portal. You and your um science fiction your fantasy novels you read a lot. What? I I enjoy them. Inko, and don't say it because I have a dragon cork. Well, it's sort of true. As Ryoko sighs, as Inko picks it up. It's a big egg. Dear, can you help me? As they come, they both try to pick it up as their hand, both their hands got cut. As blood gives contact to the egg. As the egg drops, they drop down because you know it kind of hurt. As the egg starts glowing, as Ryoko grabs Inka and jumps backwards, getting ready for attack if something happens. Dear, it's I just cut myself. It it's glowing, dear. Yeah, I give it that is strange. But Inka has a very strange feeling about the egg that, that that she has to protect it she doesn't know why Ryoko feels that way too but she's worried that it might be something dangerous she doesn't know what type of species it came from or maybe it's a fossil she's not totally sure so as they get the egg it's not totally huge but Ryoko is, is, is able to carry it no problem dear let 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 me take care of it. I'm a little stronger than you are. <sighs> Fine. As they walk, as Ryoko is holding the egg, as it stopped glowing by now, as it's going through the process of you know, it's going it's it's fertilized, so it's going to take a little bit for the egg to hatch. And they have no idea what type of egg this is. Take a random egg, strange portal pops open, egg pops out, floats, then Inko decides to pick it up and let's, let's, let's take it home, you know, it's like trying, it's like finding, it's, it's, it, sorry, it's like finding a T-Rex egg and just taking it home, you know, you don't know, not too smart, but anyways, as she gets in contact with the Hori, the Hero uh, Association, as Nezu's quite interested about this egg they found. As Nezu gets a phone call. Hello, this is Nezu. Ryoko. It's it's been a it's uh 
Plus, she speaks with you. What can I help you? What What can I help you with, dear? And she's like, I'm kind of strange, and I kind of need help. We got almost ran off the road, and we kind of came across a strange egg. I'm sending the pictures now. As Nezu sees, interesting. I've never seen an egg like this. I'll have, I'll have some people pick you up. I'm quite interested in what you found, Dragon Hero. I'm quite fascinated with this. And if they get picked up as the eggs in uh, UA, as it's it's being scanned as the X-ray comes in as Nezu found uh, Nezu, you know, smart, so he found out that he needs to be, you know, because it's an egg. But the amount of heat it needs, it's insane. So Nezu had a, um, he had some magma transported. As he found a container that is able to hold magma without melting. That's for, you know, story's sake. As the eggs was acting strange, after some time has passed, as it starts moving in the small pit of, you know, magma it's in. Not, let's say it's not magma, it's in some sort of heat, heating stuff, so, you know, it's all technical stuff, but. As Nezu calls, Miss Rico, you, you and your wife need to come down here to UA. That, I think the egg, I think the egg is hatching. Fascinating. As Ryoko and Inko get to UA as the egg is finally cracking. As the egg finally hatches, as as everyone's draw drop as they see a little baby boy. He doesn't look look like this right away because you know this is older. This is when he's older, but um, he has. He has black hair with red tips. As his hands have... His hands look like that in the picture. His whole... Majority of his... His hands, arms... And mo ma majority of his chest... Is... Is covered in this sort of scales. He has very small horns. Not as big as these... He still, he still hasn't, he's still baby, so he won't have big horns right away. He'll slowly grow into them. Fascinating. As, as Nezu's, I don't think he's human, but we need to get that checked out later. But as Inko walks over to the baby in that eggshell, as Ryoko, stop Inko, you don't, you don't know if it's dangerous. It's just a baby, Ryoko. Stop being a... Stopping all standoffish as she picks the baby up. As the baby opens. Opens his eyes. Everyone sees a reddish glow. His eyes glow all the time. As the little baby touches Inko's hand. Little finger. As instantly she, from that moment, she just adored the baby. As she's like, um, Professor Nezu, is it possible if... I could adopt him. We don't know where he's from, and I don't know if there's more of him, but he's he's alone, and I'm not going to have him in a slab or whatever. Ag agreed, Miss Miss Inka. Seriously, sweetheart. As Ryoko is confused. Ryoko, dear, we wanted a child. We wanted a child, and this little one's alone. It needs us. After all, we found him in the wilderness. It's only right. <sighs> I guess you're right. As she walks over to the little guy, as he grabs onto you know her finger, as she smiles. Fine, you win. I can't really. I can't really churn or. I can't really turn down that adorable little baby now, can I? As she picks picks him up, I guess we could say that he has a dragon cord because he has scales like like dragons. So I guess I guess that's covered. 
But we're definitely going to have to get his DNA check out. As they ran some tests as they are shocked that they have the DNA matches with Ryoko and Inko. And some and some and and some unknown Gino they're not familiar with. As they're holding little Izuku, and she's like, "Now we get just gotta name him, sweetheart. What do you think?" As Ry Ryoko doesn't know what she doesn't she doesn't know what 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 the oh sorry she doesn't know what what type of name she would give him. As as Inko's like, "What about Izuku?" That's, I've always wanted, it. I've always, it's, it was my father's name. What do you think, dear? And she's like, if that's what you want, then, then I have no problem with it. Hello there, I'm your mother. I am Inko. As the baby's playing around with her finger. As that's, we're going to stop it there. It's a good spot to stop it. I hope you guys have a good night and day, judging by time zones. All right, bye.